I'm hitting live on this one. Okay. Going live, going live. Okay, good morning everybody. It's 11 o'clock. My name is Deshaun Russell. I am the owner of Southern Elegance Candle Company and I'm actually looking at three different cameras, so if I'm not looking at like where you are right now, it's because we are going live on both Facebook. So good morning, Facebook. We're going live on Instagram. Good morning, Instagram. And we are recording a YouTube video. So we are trying to hit all of our social media platforms. Eventually, we will also add... Um, Oh, goodness, there's one more that I want to add. I can't even think of the name of it. Periscope. Periscope. We'll, we'll be going live on Periscope also. So yesterday, um, we sent out a message and said, if you have any questions about the company, about me, about anything that I do, just let us know. Um, also, you can hit us up in the comments. Um, if you have any questions, we'll try to um, catch your comments as we're talking and, and answer any of your questions that you may have while we are live um, but I'm going to start with the questions that we already have. So again, my name is Deshaun Russell. I am the owner of Southern Elegance Candle Company. I started Southern Elegance literally with like two pots in my kitchen about four years ago. 2016 is when I started the company. Um, we've been sold in over 400 stores all over the U.S. Um, and I have been very lucky that I have... Um, grown pretty quickly in terms of being able to get into stores and having brand recognition so um and that's it so we're going to answer a couple of questions um and really just go ahead and get into it so that i can um answer the questions that you have so this first question we get is from wanda and we get it a lot and the question is do you have a store no we do not have a store i'm a manufacturing space um, I've given a tour, I think it's pinned to our Facebook um, page. We only make candles here. We do not sell candles out of our warehouse. So we make them, we pack them up, and we ship them out to you. The only place that you can buy them is on our um, website, or you can go to our store locator, which honestly we don't keep updated that well. But you can go to the store locator and see if there's a store near you that carries our candles. And if you would like a store near you to to carry out candles, please, 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 please go in, let them know that, you know, our candles are wonderful, they smell great, and you want them to carry us. But to answer the other question, no, we do not have a retail store. Second question, um, this kind of feeds into it, how do you retain and maintain wholesale boutiques and stores? My advice is to start with your direct-to-consumer sales. I did a lot of craft shows, festivals, and I built up a base. So once I built up that base and I knew that I had a viable product, I was able to then go into boutiques and ask them to carry my candles. 95% of the boutiques that I approach and that I still approach tell me no. So I think there's this misconception that, you know, you have this great product and everybody wants to sell it all the time. And the truth is most people are going to tell you no. They don't want to be bothered with your stuff. They have... Um, products in their store that they know is a good fit, they know that their customers like it, and they know that it sells. So it's kind of hard for them to take a chance on a new brand because they don't know if your stuff is going to sell initially or not. Another thing that I did was I did a lot of consignment where basically um, the store owner gets a percentage of my sales. So I did that when I first started because I really didn't have a lot of options. Now I don't do consignment, but when I first started, festivals because I, literally I would sell my candles anywhere that I could and then once I built up a very strong local following then I was able to start approaching boutiques so I highly recommend um, that then how do we maintain our relationships basically we call them we email them we check in with them we send out questionnaires about once a year asking for feedback um, we are constantly introducing new fragrances, new vessels. So we're trying to keep we try to keep the brand fresh, so that stores always have something new to introduce to customers. But the other part of that is sometimes people like what they like, so we keep our core scents the same, and then we constantly introduce new um, scents during the holidays and then the spring and summer, and then we may have limited edition releases also. So. Angela had quite a few questions, and that is okay. It said, no, not Angela. I think that was, uh, who had a lot of questions? I have to, Tiffany, I think, had, no? 
I didn't write her name down. I'm going to have to go back and check and see who this was. Angela asks, how long does it take you to create a new candle scent, and who do you test it with, a group and our craft shows? So, first off, we don't create new fragrances here. We work with a fragrance house that does that. And even then, we really try not to create something brand new. We try to choose from the library that they already have. And the fragrance house that I work with has something like 10,000 fragrances. So we really try to work with existing fragrances and just tailor our selection to our brand, if that makes sense. So quite frankly, we're not on the level yet where we can have our own scent created because that's very expensive. So we just choose from what is already available. The bigger your company gets, the more variety you will have. So initially we worked with Candle Science and I just had to choose what Candle Science had. And I think they have several hundred fragrances. So we just had to choose from their fragrances, um, that the fragrances that work best for our brand. Once I got a little bit larger, I was able to work with a fragrance house that specializes in fragrances for um, bath, body, and home products, and they had a much, much larger um, variety, so now I'm able to choose from fragrances that other candle makers, um, some smaller candles may not be able to, to have. So that's how we do that, but we do not create any um, fragrances here um, because it's just too expensive. The second thing, who do we test it with? Initially, we tested everything in-house, but um, we are going to start asking for testers so that when we are ready to introduce new scents, we're going to send it out to our email list. Um, hey, would you like to be a tester? And then those people that respond will choose somewhere around 50 people from them to become testers for us so that we can get a variety of feedback. Because quite frankly, I have a small team and sometimes what we like is not what other people like. So we had a couple of fragrances last year that bombed um, our country vineyard and our roses scent. We liked them. Y'all didn't. So um, next year we've decided that we're going to get a lot of feedback from our customers and from the people um, that buy our candles to see what is it that you guys want to have. So yeah, so stay tuned for that. Join our email list because we are going to be asking for candle testers through our email list. And when I first started and I didn't have a team and it was just me still in my kitchen, yes, I would trust new fragrances at craft shows. That's basically what I did. So I would be like, hey, this is a fragrance I'm thinking about introducing. And I would just put it out and see if people bought it. If they bought it, I knew that it was a winner. If they didn't, then I knew to kind of go back to the drawing board. So someone asked, how do you balance your business and home life? There is absolutely no balance. Something is always, always out of balance. So either it's my home life is out of balance, my work life is out of balance. Right now my work life is consuming everything that I do. So that's just what it is. I work, I go home, I get home usually around six o'clock. I eat, I, my goal was to go to the gym. That's not happening. So I usually end up just kind of falling asleep around 8.30, 9 o'clock, I'm usually in bed. And then I start that whole routine over because um, right now work is just so, so crazy. Oh, uh, definitely. Um, um, Evans, IP Law, even though I know your real name. Yeah, I'll definitely. You're on our email list, so you can be a tester. So that would, um, that would be great. So, yeah, but we're going to start doing more with our customers and making sure that um, you guys have input into what we do because I think that's important. I've done a pretty decent job of choosing scents, but um, quite frankly, I'm, I'm good at numbers. I'm not good at creative. So, but yeah, home and work life always out of whack. When I spend a lot of time with my kid, work suffers. When I spend a lot of time at work, my relationship with my son suffers. Um, you just have to do the best you can. I really don't think that there's a such thing as like work-life balance because that implies that work is going to get 50 and then home is going to get 50 and everybody's going to be happy when in reality somebody's always going to be very unhappy. Either the kid or the work, the employees, like somebody's going to be miserable about the decisions that you're making. You just have to do the best you can at any given moment um, and really that's all you can do. So... The last question is from Tiffany, and it looks like Malore Bathhouse, and she asks about branding. And branding is like a whole thing. It's not um, easy, but I'm going to give you three tips for branding, and like everybody needs to kind of follow these tips. 
The first tip that you need for branding, you need to figure out who are you selling to before you even create a product. Most people create their product and then try to find somebody to buy it. But the first thing you need to do is figure out who are you selling to. When I created my company, Southern Elegance Candle Company, I already knew who I was selling to. I was selling to people like myself, even though I'm not really my ideal customer. But I knew that I was selling to people, mainly women, that lived in the South or grew up in the South. Like I knew exactly who I was selling to to begin with. Then you got to know what it is that you're going to sell to them. Again, a lot of times we start with a product and hope somebody wants the product. So in the beginning, I did soaps, body butter, sugar scrubs, lotions, body oils, and candles. And then I had to like say, what is it that people really want? Like, what is it that I can really make money from? And I narrowed it down to just candles and home fragrance products. So I didn't choose what I wanted to do because if that was the case, I would be making soap right now. And I still make soap for myself. But because I can't make money from it, I didn't create a whole company around it. I created a company around the candles. So number one, know, literally number one, know who are you selling to? Number two, know what product those people want. And then number three, choose where you are going to sell. In the beginning, I sold at a lot of craft shows and festivals, festivals because I didn't know any better. I wish someone had told me to focus on internet sales. So now, four years in it, I'm focusing on internet sales and trying to get my internet sales up. But you just have to make a choice about where are you gonna sell. So you can sell online with your, with your website, with a Shopify website, or if you do free, you can do BitCartel, you can do Etsy, like there are a lot of places to sell. Um, or you can do like a lot of festivals, people do, um, like literally every weekend for the first two years, I was at a festival. And I do not recommend that. That will burn you out really quickly. But that's how I made most of my money. So um, festivals, craft shows, local farmers markets, I've done it all. Um, and then your um, wholesale platforms like FAIR. FAIR is like FAIR and Tundra, I think, are the two biggest online and indie Indie something, there's one more. Or like the biggest online, I do Fair and Tundra, those are the two money makers for me. But um, selling on wholesale platforms has been very beneficial for my company. In fact, being on Fair has changed the whole trajectory of my company. So if you can get on Fair or Tundra or one of those wholesale um, platforms, that would be great because that's how I really make my money. I don't have to do a lot of trade shows anymore. Um, because I'm on those platforms. But for branding, number one, literally, number one, know who you're selling to. Number two, know what product those people want. And then number three, figure out how are you going to sell it to those um, people that you are selling to. So those are all of our questions. Hold on, I have a question as well. How do you get your candles into retail stores? Um, I already answered that, but really quickly, it, it kind of goes back to the brand. Number one, you got to know who you're selling to, what you're selling, and how you're going to sell it. When you are approaching stores, you need to make sure that the product that you have fits with their customers. Like, we are not a Walmart brand. We're just not. We're really not even a Target brand. We're more of a Macy's, Nordstrom's, high-end kind of department store brand. So for me to approach Walmart would be a waste of my time. So you got to know who the stores are that you want to get into and then approach those stores. Your branding, your packaging, your presentation, everything has to be top notch because you are competing with established brands. So when you put my brand next to some of the established brands, you don't know that we are a small company operating out of a warehouse in Rayford with a population of 5,000. You can't tell that by looking at the visual presentation on the shelf. So you have to make sure that whatever you're doing when you are approaching a retail store is top notch, the packaging, the branding, and everything is on point, and you have a clear um, idea of who you're selling to so you're only approaching stores that it makes sense for them to carry your product. And even with all of that, expect to know.
because like I said, 95% of the stores um, told me no. So good morning. Yeah, create a strong, oh, let me, and protect it. Thank you, thank you. Make sure you get everything trademarked. Everything for me was trademarked before I even went to market. Um, Evans IP Law, her Instagram handle is there, Andrea. She did all of my trademark and she continues to handle it. So make sure you protect it. More high end. Hey, let me tell y'all this. Don't don't do low hanging fruit. Create a brand that's gonna make you money. So my candles are twenty. The high, the most expensive, that most expensive candle I have is twenty eight dollars. Okay, don't go for the low hanging fruit. Yes, you're gonna sell a lot of them, but you're gonna kill yourself when you start trying to do wholesale or when you start. Um, really having more customers you really want to make a little bit more money do do more like elevate what you're doing to a much higher level um yeah hey have let me see good morning when when you're teaching about how much did you make selling your candles on the side oh how much did i make selling candles on the side um when i started making about two thousand dollars a month selling my candles on the side is when i quit my day job because i could i I couldn't live off of that because that, you know, you have to buy supplies, but I could cut my lifestyle at that time I was married. I could cut my lifestyle to live off of what I was making on the side. Do not quit your day job until your side hustle can sustain you. Do not quit your day job. Don't quit your day job. Do not quit your day job until your side hustle can sustain you. Um, in the beginning, you're going to have to make a lot of adjustments, but it'll be worth it. And a lot of money that you make is going to go back into the company to brand it and scale it. Um, yes, yes. I think that are that's all of the questions. I don't want this to be too long. We're at about 16 minutes. I wanted to keep it under 30. So that's where we are. We'll do this periodically um, just to talk about the behind the scenes, how I grew it, how I do it, what's going on. I want you guys to also meet some of the people that work here. I have a great team. It is not just me um, doing this. Um, so I just want you to have like a real behind the scenes idea of how this works. It is not easy. It is, um, it is brutal. Like I was, I got to go to the cardiologist today because I thought I was having a heart attack and they were like, nope, just stress. You need to work less. So I still have to go to the cardiologist to make sure that I'm not working myself to death. So, I mean, it is brutal building a company to sustain yourself and it can, can totally consume everything around you. So I kind of want to make sure that people that are building their company don't make the same mistakes that I did. So it was great talking to everybody. Y'all have a wonderful Thursday. I'm going out for drinks and karaoke later. So hopefully y'all will do something that's fun too. And have a great day. Bye.